welcome back to the next how to create luxury ice cream videos. We do these videos, hopefully you can make them at home, but we also use ingredients that you can buy straight in the shops. So you don't have to have specialist equipment like sugar thermometers or all this other kind of thing that you don't necessarily have at home. You can go to your local supermarket, buy the bits and then create these. So today's flavor is Gimme S'more, Ben and Jerry's flavor. Now, I had this when I was in New York, and it was nice, it, it is a nice ice cream, but there were a few things I personally would have improved on, which we're gonna try and do today. So what is Gimme S'more? And it's a toasted marshmallow ice cream with a cookie swirl, a graham cracker swirl, and some fudge flecks in it. Now, they are quite difficult things to swirl, but um, we'll get to that in a bit. So if you're unsure what a s'more is, it's one of these. Marshmallow, chocolate, grand cracker, or, you know, digestive biscuits if you're in the UK. Heated, pushed together, eaten, gorgeous. So let's just get on and make this ice cream. So we're gonna start with all the ingredients listed below to make this toasted marshmallow ice cream. This is a custard base itself. So it's a little bit different to the eggless bases. So what you'll do is you'll put your sugar and milk in the pan on the cob and heat it slowly to dissolve the sugar. In a vessel next to it or close to, have your egg yolks all ready to go. What you're gonna do is when that milk is up to temperature, you're gonna start to decant into your egg yolks, whisking thoroughly every single time you put some milk in there. You're tempering the eggs, essentially. You're starting to cook the eggs, but you need to make sure they don't scramble. So as you're heating those egg yolks, keep whisking them up, and then by the time you've used half your milk mixture, put your egg yolk mixture back into the pot, and then turn the heat down to low, and just stir it nice and slow for around five to 10 minutes. It's not gonna go thick like a custard, like a traditional custard, but it is gonna thicken up a little bit. So whilst that is on the hob getting all nice and toasty, you need to actually toast the marshmallows. So as you can see here, I put some in a little ceramic pot. I'm gonna put them in the oven and warm them up. As it turns out, the ceramic pot was a pretty useless idea, so just spread them out onto a baking tray, get them in the oven, 150, 175 degrees C, something like that, for about 10 minutes, soften them right up. But you want to burn the outside, not blacken within an inch of their lives, but you really want to get some color on there. So I started the process under the grill and then finished off with the kitchen torch, as you can see here. If you use a smaller marshmallow, then you know do it over the hob individually if you like. But that's one thing that was missing from the original, was it just wasn't enough of the toasted marshmallow flavor. Once your marshmallows are ready, you then need to remove your custard base from the hob and put it in a blender. Into that blender, you're gonna put all those really sticky marshmallows. Now, one bit of advice here, which I failed with massively, is I let the marshmallows cool down a little bit too much on the pan. It was really difficult to get them off and they stuck to everything. The utensils, my fingers, the lid, you name it, they stuck to it. So keep them nice and hot and then get them into that mix and blend, blend well. For about 30 seconds to a minute on full power, get that base really mixed up and you'll see the color change and that's the effect of that burnt marshmallow indoor custard base. Once that's all blended up, put it into a container and cover with cling film. Put that in the fridge for 24 hours, so overnight. You want that those flavors to come out. You want that marshmallow flavor to really absorb into that custard. So 24 hours and you'll be ready to go. So whilst your base is in the fridge, you can get on now and start making those swirls. So graham crackers are something we don't have in England at all. You can't buy them, you have to import them, and I'm just not gonna do that for some biscuits. So what we have in England is, as Mary Berry likes to call, the UK equivalent of graham crackers, digestive biscuits. Very similar texture, apparently, and taste-wise, I think it's pretty close, but I know that graham crackers can have you know, honey and kind of cinnamon flavors to them. So what we're gonna do is blend those with some honey. What you're gonna do is just crush your graham crackers into a tub, a little bit of butter in with some honey, warm that on the hob and then mix it together. You're gonna to be left with a nice thick biscuit mix that you'll store in the fridge until ready. Next is the cookie swirl. 
So cookies is a big American thing in England. We love cookies as well. We have different types, I'm sure. But what we used in this video was Maryland cookies. Did exactly the same thing with these. We took some of these cookies, we crushed them up into a bowl, but rather than mixing them with something warm, we just used what we had in the cupboard, and that was some of this, which is Monin syrup. This is a lovely Monin chocolate syrup. It's got a very decadent consistency, taste. It's, it's really, really nice stuff. So again, mix that all together until you've got a nice loose kind of mix of, of the two, and then put it in a, a container and put it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. The last part of this ice cream that you're gonna to need to prepare is the fudge flakes. So I did have a look in the shops for some fudge, but it seems to be a very difficult thing to get hold of at the moment, so I just made some. So I made this fudge with condensed milk and chocolate, simple as that. I'll put the details in the description below. Once you heat all of this up in a double boiler, make sure the chocolate's thoroughly melted and then pour it into your container, line it with cling film or foil or whatever you like. Once it's in there, let it go hard, either out in the open or put it in the fridge until you're ready to actually cut it and prepare it. A few hours before doing this, I took the fudge out of the fridge, which is where I kept it, chopped a piece off and grated it into a container and then stored that in the freezer, ready to go. And what that does is that just helps to keep those fudge flakes separated and they don't amalgamate back together into one large lump. So all that's left to do now is start making the ice cream. So take your ice cream base out the fridge. As you can see from the consistency, because of the marshmallows containing gelatin, they've created a very thick base. So you can make sure you give it a really good stir to loosen it up and combine that with your cream and then put it in your machine. So once your ice cream is churned, it, like I said, this took 20 minutes to churn. We're gonna put this in our lovely decorated container, which my wife has done again. And we're gonna load this up with the various different bits. I've forgotten fudge. So as I said, we're gonna load this up into the tub and we're gonna mix in our little fudge pieces and our two cookie-based swirls and put it in the freezer for about four or five hours, but in reality, it'll probably be overnight. Right, so it's been 24 hours since we made this. Hello since we made this Gimme S'mores ice cream. Gimme S'more, I should say. I wanna just quickly catch up on the original to try this when I was in the States, because it's not a flavor you can get over in England. And that is the marshmallow flavor was very, very subtle, as in it didn't really taste a lot of marshmallow, the ice cream. And the add-ins, the sauces, really wasn't enough in there to, to even notice. The nice little fudge pieces though, but they were, they, you know, they were quite decent. So um, that's that. Now another thing I wanna to touch on is the reduction of sugar in the base. Now, when you're melting the marshmallows, in 100 grams of marshmallows, is about 71 grams of sugar. So you'll need to subtract that from the overall amount of sugar you would normally put in an ice cream base. Because if you just increase the sugar, it's unlikely to freeze, or it might freeze, it might just take a long time. So that's something you need to consider making any ice cream, actually. So now we're just gonna take some out of the tub and see what it looks like. I mean, look at that. Now that is what you call a cookie swirl. How does it taste? For a start, it tastes like marshmallows. The actual ice cream base tastes a lot like burnt marshmallows, but not overburnt, enough burnt. So the actual base, really, really good. M much improved over the original. And I mean, I may have eaten the rest of the cookie swells that were left in the tub, so I know what they taste like, but 
amazing. It truly is something spectacular. If you've never made burnt marshmallow ice cream, my word, you gotta try it. Numbers wise, let me just grab my phone. It actually is relatively cheap. So it, these are all England prices. The double cream, half a tub is a pound. Sugar, 90, gra uh, 90 grams, 7p. Milk, 15p. Milk powder, 4p. Marshmallows, 50p. The fudge, 185. Now I made that, you might be able to buy some a bit cheaper, but the graham cracker swirl, obviously that's digestive biscuits. Most people in England have digestive biscuits in the house. Just use those. If not, that little swirl costs 78p and the cookie swirl 52. That meant a total of 491. And that gives you two tubs for 491. So obviously Ben and Jerry's cost about 499, five pounds, something like that. I mean if you order it from the takeaway, you know, pizza places, they're uh, nearly six quid, but you can make this nice and cheap. Really good ice cream. Please, please try it. Let us know what you think of it. And if you do try and make it, send us some pictures as well. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.